All right, let's find the integrals of all six of the trig functions. Well, first we got the two easiest ones. Of course, we know that when we're finding the derivative of sine, we're going to get cosine. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. What that means for us is that when we're trying to think about integrals, the integral of sine is going to be the antiderivative of sine. So since the derivative of cosine is negative sine, that would mean that the derivative of negative cosine would be sine. So our integral of sine would be negative cosine, of course, plus our constant. And the integral of cosine, since the derivative of sine is cosine, integral of cosine would be sine. So there's a couple that you should know already. When we look at uh, derivative of tangent and cotangent, we know derivative of tangent is secant squared. And derivative of cotangent is cosecant squared. Since both of these are um, things that are squared, uh, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to find the integral of secant and the integral of cosecant. However, these things will be helpful when we are trying to find those things. A couple of others that are going to be helpful for us are knowing the derivative of secant and cosecant. And derivative of secant, remember, was secant tangent, which means the derivative of cosecant would be the opposite of that, and the co-functions of each of them. So negative cosecant cotangent. We've also recently discussed... Um, the natural log rule, and that came from uh, remembering the integral of 1 over x was natural log of x. Technically, it's natural log of absolute value of x because you can't take the natural log of a negative number. Um, but that led to the natural log rule that when we noticed the numerator was the derivative of the denominator, we ended up with the integral of that being the natural log of f of x, whatever that function was. We can use that natural log rule to help us find the integral of tangent. See, since tangent is going to be sine over cosine, we recognize that there is a connection between the numerator and the denominator, that the numerator, it isn't exactly the derivative of the denominator, but it's fairly close. We can go through some use substitution to really spell this out, but if we let u be the denominator, cosine of x, then du would be the derivative of that, negative sine of x dx. But we see that the numerator isn't negative sine, it's just sine. So we'll be able to replace sine of x dx with negative 1 du. And that's what we do before we get to the integrating. So we substitute um, the sine of x that's in the numerator and the dx that's outside with negative 1 du. That cosine of x that's in the denominator, that will be u. So we're really looking at the integral of negative 1 over u du, which is going to be negative natural log of u, which our u started out as cosine. So that means that negative natural log of cosine of x is the integral of tangent. Of course, the integral of cotangent is pretty much the exact same process as the integral of tangent. So we'll make it a little bit trickier by looking at the integral of cotangent of 3x dx. We'll be able to use that same u substitution idea with cotangent as well, since uh, cotangent is going to be cosine of 3x over sine of 3x. Then, we'll let u again be the denominator. This time it's sine of 3x. The differential then would be cosine of 3x times the derivative of what's on the inside, 3, and then dx. Uh, when we look at going back and substituting, 
we had sine of 3x is our u, so we'll put that in the denominator. Uh, but then we have to substitute for cosine 3x dx, which we don't exactly have yet. However, from here, we can see that cosine of 3x dx, if we just divide both sides by 3, is going to be 1 third du. So, going back to my integral, we would have 1 third du. So, we pull that 1 third all the way out in front and take the integral of 1 over u du, and again we'll end up with a natural log. So, our uh, integral is going to be one third natural log of u, and our u was back here, sine of 3x plus c. So if we wanted to find just the integral of cotangent of x, then that would be this same expression, just without the one third and the three, so it would be the natural log of sine of x plus c secant and cosecant, they get a little bit messier, and they're definitely not as obvious. Um, when it comes to secant, finding the integral of secant, um, we're not going to use that, that same idea of turning into sines and cosines. Um, and that's for a simple reason, because if we did, we'd have 1 over cosine. Uh, and trying to use u substitution here, we could let u be cosine of x. But then du is going to be that negative sine of x. And since we don't have a sine or a negative sine in here, we can't use it. So we need to go all the way back to the beginning. And what I'm thinking about is that is those derivatives of our trig functions. That the derivative of tangent was secant squared. And the derivative of secant was secant tangent. And both of them had secant in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this secant... And I'm going to multiply it by secant plus tangent. Over secant plus tangent. Effectively multiplying it by 1 and not changing anything. But in a different form. There is a little bit of math magic that happens here. Um, that when I distribute that secant, we get secant squared plus secant tangent all over secant plus tangent and what I want you to notice is that relationship between the numerator and the denominator that uh, the derivative of secant is secant tangent and the derivative of tangent is secant squared so since we have a numerator that is a derivative of the denominator, then that means our, uh, our integral is going to be natural log of the denominator of secant x plus tangent x. So how about when we want to integrate cosecant of x over 5? We can use that exact same idea. Right, that we want to um, take a look at cosecant of x over 5 and think about those derivatives that involved cosecant, right? And that cotangent, the derivative of cotangent was negative cosecant squared. And the derivative of cosecant was negative cosecant cotangent. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, cosecant of that x over 5 plus cotangent of that x over 5. And same thing in the denominator. And our result is going to be cosecant squared plus cosecant cotangent all over cosecant 
plus cotangent. And now we want to compare that numerator and denominator. When we look at the denominator, we have two terms, and the derivative of cosecant is not exactly that cosecant cotangent right here. Remember that the derivative of cosecant of x over 5 is going to utilize the chain rule. It's going to be negative cosecant cotangent But then times the derivative of what's inside, that one-fifth. So what's missing out of there is this negative one-fifth. And it's the same thing with when it comes to uh, that cotangent as well. That the derivative of cotangent isn't exactly cosecant squared because we're taking the cotangent of x over 5. So its derivative, just to spell it out, the derivative of cotangent of x over 5 is going to be a negative cosecant squared of that x over 5, but because we have to use the chain rule, we also take the derivative of what's inside, 1 fifth. So for both of these terms, what we need to make it the derivative is a negative 1 fifth. But now I've just changed my fraction. So in order to change it back, I'll also multiply by uh, negative 5. So then what we'll have is this big old fraction. Right? Um, notice I took the negative 5 that was out here and brought it out to the front as a co coefficient of the integral. I also took the negative 1 fifth and distributed it across the numerator. That's why we'll have our negative one-fifth cosecant squared and minus one-fifth cosecant cotangent. Then we have the situation where the derivative of cosecant is right here and the derivative of cotangent is right here. So we can utilize that, um, that natural log rule where our negative five is going to come out in front and we'll have natural log of what's in the denominator, cosecant x over 5 plus cotangent of x over 5 plus c. So let's kind of break this all down and kind of collect our thoughts here. So just like how trig functions kind of paired up with each other, uh, when we took their derivatives, they're also going to pair up with each other when we take their integrals. Uh, we saw that because the derivative of sine is cosine, that means the integral of cosine is going to be sine. And the integral of sine is going to be negative cosine. When it came to cotangent and tangent, what we did was rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines and used u substitution. The result was that the integral of cotangent is the natural log of sine. And for tangent, it kind of matched up very similarly that it was going to be the opposite of the natural log of cosine. We also saw secant and cosecant pair up very nicely as well that the integral of cosecant is going to be the natural log of secant plus tangent. And when it came to cosecant, it would be the opposite of all that. So negative natural log of cosecant plus cotangent. And when it came to any variation of that, when we multiplied what was inside of the trig function by a constant, so something like the secant of 8x, in order to find that integral, we'd think about the secant of x. And the secant of x is the natural log of secant plus tangent. 
So we'll do secant of 8x plus tangent of 8x. But we would also have to divide by that coefficient as well. So 1 8th of that. And that's pretty much it.